In this video, I'll show you how to use a neutral density filter to add motion and movement to a photo. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV. Now today I've come out to the Norfolk coast, to a beautiful part of the country called Haysborough. Now it has this fantastic red and white lighthouse. I mean, you've got to photograph it. And when you combine it with this beautiful field, it's got this fantastic crop growing in it, that's going to be terrific. Now there is a very small breeze blowing today, and that's causing all of the crop just to move a little bit. And I want to capture that movement in my photographs. Now to do it, I need to use a shutter speed of at least five seconds and probably longer. So how do I do that? Well, you might think I'm going to work in shutter priority mode, and you'd be right. And you might think I'm just going to dial in five seconds exposure, and you'd be right, but it doesn't quite work that simply. Let me show you why. Okay, so I'm on ISO 100, I'm on a shutter priority mode, so that's TV on a Canon, and I've got five seconds dialed in. Let me just take a picture, and I'll show you why it doesn't work. And five seconds nearly there, there it is. Okay, and what I end up with is a completely white picture. Nothing recorded at all, because at five seconds, that's far too long for the camera to record any detail. The exposure for this is probably more like a five hundredth of a second, not five seconds. So I need to get my shutter speed down to five seconds by reducing the ambient light that's entering the camera. And I do that by using a filter. Now, if you have a look at the Adorama Learning Center, you can find out lots of information about filter types, but I'm using one very special one. It's this one right here. This is a neutral density, and it's not any old neutral density. This is a nine-stop neutral density. It's the Hoyer ND400, and this filter is gonna allow me to drop my shutter speed to five seconds, 10 seconds, even 20 seconds, even in the middle of the day with bright sunshine like we've got here. All I need to do is just add it onto the camera. So let's just screw this filter onto the lens. Okay, so there we go, we're screwed on. Now, once I've got that filter in place, I'm not gonna be able to see very much. In fact, I can't see a thing through the viewfinder. So I'm gonna switch onto live view mode, which means I can actually see on the back of the LCD what my camera is seeing. Now, if you're an SLR user, this has a big advantage because it also flips up the mirror. And when you flip up the mirror, you get less camera shake because you don't have that movement of the mirror moving when you take the photo. Now, to minimize camera shake, of course, I'm using a tripod, goes without saying. I'm also gonna put this into the two second self timer. So when I press the button, it'll have two seconds and then the, sh the shutter will fire, but it does it super silently because we're in live view mode. Five seconds later, we get the shot. Now the shutter speed you need will vary depending on the amount of breeze you've got and the, the object you're photographing and how much it moves and of course how wide the lens you're using. Now I'm using my 24-105 lens at the 24mm end and at five seconds I, I can see a, a bit of movement in there, that looks good. Let's double it up to 10 seconds. Okay, let's go again whilst we have a bit of a breeze. So a 10 second exposure, twice as long, that means I get a lot more movement in my subject, a lot more blur. I can't decide here and now whether I want to have more or less, so I'll take a sequence of pictures and choose the best one when we get back onto the computer. Okay, let's do one more, let's do 20 seconds. We've got a nice little bit of breeze blowing. 20 seconds, long time, there you go. Now you will find that the objects closest to you are gonna appear more blurry than the stuff that's further away. So it's a good idea to make sure you frame up your shot with plenty of foreground interest in the picture. And to that end, because I want more foreground, I'm actually gonna just flip over my camera and also take the same shot in upright, in portrait format. Okay, so let's recompose for that. Now again, I'm gonna use the live view. There we go and we'll lock that off. Now in the upright format, I've got a completely different looking picture, much more foreground interest, much more dramatic looking picture. At least that's how it appears now on the camera. But of course, if you've done this yourself, you know you should never trust the back of your camera. You may find you prefer a different one when you get back in front of the computer. 
Okay, so I'm going to take the same three pictures again, and then we're going to have a look at the results back on the computer, and we'll see which one works best. So join me in just a moment. Okay, so here I am back inside of Photoshop CS6. I've gone through all the pictures, and this is the one I want to use. So let me open up the raw file here from Minibridge, and I'll take it into Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop CS6. Now, what am I going to do? Well, probably not too much, but the first thing I want to do is to crop the picture. Have a look at the corners of the image, and you'll just see these little dark areas. That is the very edge of my neutral density filter just creeping in to the frame. So I'm going to get the crop tool and remove those by recropping the picture. I also get the advantage of doing that means I can recompose it slightly and I can bring that lighthouse dead center where I really wanted it. Now looking at the sky, it's a little bit bright here on the left hand side, but one of the advantages of shooting in RAW is the latitude that you have to adjust and recover things like shadow and highlight detail. Now in this case, I can just get my highlight slider and take it to the left as I go to the left, those highlights get darker and darker, and that looks pretty good. If you're using an older version of Photoshop, then have a look for recovery, which does a broadly similar thing. Okay, so that's pretty good. What else can we do here? Well, it looks a bit flat, so I'm going to add in a bit more contrast just to give it a bit of lift. And if I'm talking contrast, I have to talk clarity. I do happen to love clarity, and you may have noticed that if you've seen some of my previous videos. But with clarity, I can adjust the contrast on the mid-tones of the picture. In other words, it looks fabulous. So I'll put a little bit of clarity in there and a bit of vibrance just to dash the colors a little bit higher. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. Now I'm happy with the sky, although it does look a, a tiny bit blue. The crop here in the field, well, that's a little bit dark, and I'll deal with that in a second. Let's sort out that sky. Now, color is all about white balance, and if you're shooting JPEG, you have to dial in the right balance in the camera. It's a bit harder to adjust. But here in RAW, it's not a problem. I was probably on auto white balance, and to get my perfect white balance, I'll just get the white balance tool, find something that's a neutral color in the image, in this case, the white band here of the lighthouse, Click on that, and that will reset my colors where I click, and that gives me a much better white balance. Okay, so uh, last thing here then is going to be the field. So the field, not so good. Well, I can deal with the field by getting the local adjustment tools, of which we have two. We have the adjustment brush and the graduated filter. I'm going to use the graduated filter, and I'll dial in an exposure of about half a stop, something like that. And I'll just drag up a half a stop extra exposure on the field. Now, to make this work better for me, I'm actually going to tighten up that gap so the, the blend between half a stop and none is much tighter. Because I'm pretty sure that's where I want it to be, right at the top edge of that field. And in fact, having done that, I can fine tune my exposure so I can make it brighter and darker. And you can see how it only affects the area that I dragged. And I can just come in there. Let's go for about there. That looks pretty good, actually. Right, that's more or less done. There is one more thing to do here in RAW, and that's to have a good close look at the picture. Let's go in really close, and I can see the beautiful movement that's being recorded in the, the field here. That looks good. But if I go really, really close, I can see this weird green edge. That is chromatic aberration, and it's very simple to remove. So all I'm going to do is to go to my lens correction, and here in the Photoshop CS6 version, it's a one-click procedure. Find the color tab, find the remove chromatic aberration button, and click it, and it's gone. No more chromatic aberration, no more green halos. Okay, so I'm going to open up that image. We'll open that up into Photoshop CS6. Here we are. And you might think I've finished, but I've got one more thing to do here in Photoshop. And that's to go very, very close, because when you're shooting at a small aperture with a wide angle lens, you get a huge depth of field. And that's good, except that when you do that, you also get to see all the sensor dust much more clearly because of that big depth of field. So let me get my spot removal tool and we'll click on that little bit of dust there. There's always some on the right hand side. And yeah, sure enough, there it is. Oh, look at all that. 
Now you might think I really should get my sensor cleaned, and um, well, I do clean it quite often. But as I say, this is extreme shooting. Small aperture, wide angle, there's another one there. So that's when you tend to notice the sensor dust the most. And as long as you're aware of that, it's something you can deal with. So there you are, there is my final picture completed. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.